Hey, stand and shout today. Hey, shout a victory shout. Amen. Somebody get excited about what God's doing in his house today. Amen. High five somebody next to you and say, I'm glad you're here, man. Hallelujah. Praise God. You ain't at your mama's church. Amen. Praise God. You know, um, there's so many things going on here today. Before I pray, I want to talk to you. Make sure that you guys get involved in this Thrive Run, whether you run, walk, or just show up. You need to be involved because we're gonna we're already claiming that Missouri is going to be abortion-free here just in, in, a, in a very, very short, short time. We're going, hey, we're going to drive back the forces of hell, right? And demons and devils right back where they belong, back in the pit of hell. Can I get a witness in here today? Amen. I hope you brought your shouting shoes. You know, um, I was talking to, I was, I was talking to uh, some people out in the hallway, and uh, and I want to thank O'Fallon and and our, our church in O'Fallon that's online with us, uh, that's live stream. I want to thank the people in Florida, Texas, California, Missouri, Kansas, Indiana, and Minnesota who is all with us today. It's, and that's just some. Amen. They're right here. Somebody shout about that, will you? Amen. Hallelujah. Hey, that's good stuff. Woo-hoo. Take that, devil. Amen. So, it, Jeff, somebody tracked me down. They wanted me to pray for him, and I prayed for him. And they said, and this wasn't even with a story, Lonnie. And they said, Pastor, we want you to know, we took this tithing challenge, and he's blowing our doors off. Uh, and I, I mean, literally, I have people chasing me down in the hallways, telling me their tithing story. And I stopped these people before I got up because I had to come in here and preach because you guys showed up. But <laughs> it, and I said, here's the challenge. The challenge ain't with the pastor or, or the church. The challenge is you and God. He doesn't say test the pastor or test the church. He says test him. Amen. I'm not the test. I'm not the plumb line. God is. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. You guys are getting kind of restless here. And Lord, we just ask that the power of the Holy Ghost come in here and fill the sanctuary. And we thank you, Lord God, that this is the God is not dead month. And, and Lord God, we, we're going we're gonna to see, oh Jesus, the benefits of, uh, of, uh, of the Holy Spirit and the resurrected life. I pray for all my friends and family who are around the whole nation who are watching. And our whole church in O'Fallon and all those who are gathered here in the sanctuary today that you shake the pillars of this place, Lord God. Revive the saints, Lord God. Let them get excited for all those who want to join on our online uh, media church, Lord God, that they join. And, and those who I've seen online who, are, who aren't feeling well, we rebuke the counsel of darkness in your life and pray that you would be set free by the hand of God today as we join in, in, in a unified prayer that the sick will be healed today. Uh, and, and claim victory in your name, Jesus. This church said amen. Give them a hand clap of praise this morning. <clears throat> amen. Hey, I said amen. Whoa, my. Well, I'm glad that you guys showed up because I wouldn't have anybody to preach to if you didn't. Um, but I want you to trust today as we turn into Matthew 28, 6. Um, <laughs> Matthew 28, 6. This is God is not dead month. And uh, as you look here at this at this text, this is going to be the, 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 the focus text for the whole month uh, because Jesus beat the grave, amen? And, and that's something just to shout about in itself. Um, and, and, and real quick, I had somebody, and I, and I don't want to really kind of let the cat out of the bag, so I'm not going to say a whole bunch, but I'm just going to throw out there a, a little, little deal that somebody came to me this week, and they're good friends of the church. And they said, we took the tithe challenge, and then this week, I found a whole year's salary got installed in my bank account. Close, you, cl- cl- close your mouth back up. Some people's mouth are still hanging open. And they've been members of this church for a long time. And they'll get, they're going to come up here and testify. They're going to rock your world. And in God can fix, Laurel, God can fix anything that is broke. 
this, Smitty, this stuff down here, this is all temporary stuff here. We, this ain't going to live forever. But while we're here, let's shout a little bit, and let's make some noise for Christ while we're here, just for the heck of it. Amen? Praise God. Amen. And, and let's get some people on board. Matthew 28, 6 says, He is not here, for he is risen. As he said, come and see the place where he lay. Then, then go quickly and tell the disciples that he is risen from the dead, and behold, he is going before you to Galilee. Um, there you will see him. See, I have told you. Um, I, I read a little bit more than I wanted to. Let me, let me take it back here. Matthew 28, 6. He is not here, for he is risen. As he said, come see the place where he lay. Let me get it back. Um, so that is probably the most profound words that have ever been spoken to mortal bodies. He's not here, he is risen. And, and, and a lot of people would say, well, what about the it is finished message in John 19 and 30? What that, let me explain that. Jesus died on the cross at Calvary. Your sins are atoned for by the work that he did on the cross at Calvary. He, he bore our sins, he bled out, and all that blood was spilled for me and you. So the atoning work for sin is done. Amen? He is risen because he's the Messiah. That's, that, that Christ is his title. Jesus is his name. Christ is his title. That means Messiah. That means, that means the anointed one, the appointed one, the chosen one, the one that will redeem you, and the one that lives. I serve a God that is fully alive. He's not dead. He's not a statue. He's not in a tomb. He's not warmed or He is alive and well, and so is this church. So you ought to go ahead and shout just a little bit if you want to. Amen. Oh, my. Oh, my. So, in, and then here's the, the second. This is my 15th year studying the Word of God. I've never seen this, Carl, in this text, and I've read it just as many times as you guys have. Look at this. So the second part, he is not here for he is risen. Got that. So I, I explained that. We, and it says, as he said. So we find out that every time God says something, something happens. And I know that is true. I know that is true, sister, by, by looking at the first chapter of the book. I'm going to read a couple. And God said, you know, 1-3, and God said, let there be light. And then 1-8 one, one, says, and God said, let there be an extent. And God said, let the waters. And, and then 10 says, and God called the dry land. And then it's 11, and God said, 14, and God said, uh, 20, and God said, uh, 24, and God said, 26, and God said. And that's where I stopped. I just, I highlighted a few for you because every time he spoke, something happened, Smokey. Something happened, and, and, and I want to speak right Come on up here, Smokey. I'm going to pray for you right now. I don't normally do this, but I know Smokey. Smokey's a good friend of mine, and he's struggling from, uh, they said he's struggling from kidney cancer. He just had one taken away, and then the, the, you got this issue going. So we're going to, I want these guys to agree with you today and pray for prayer. I love you, man. Amen. Lord, I just pray right now in the name of Jesus for Smokey. And I rebuke the, the demon of cancer. Uh, I know it has no uh, authority in his life. I rebuke its power and pray right now in the name of Jesus before this congregation and everybody on live stream and everybody at O'Fallon that he be healed. And God said that when you lay hands on the sick, Lord God, that they will be healed. And the prayers of a righteous man are powerful and effective. And claim that over Smokey's life and all today who have cancer. In Jesus' name, this church said amen. amen. Well, let's applaud the Lord. Hallelujah. The enemy didn't want me. The enemy didn't want me praying for Smokey, so I did that. Just, Amen. Well, that's what God told me to do. So if I do the God said, I know something's going to happen. Amen. We might have to get back to the service here now. So it, it's the God said thing. So God said, God said that I could do that. Because I'm a born-again believer, and if you were checked with James, and you read in the fifth chapter, 
and 13 down to about 17. It tells me to do that, being an elder of the church, to lay hands on sick people, and they will be healed. I have to believe that because God told me, Carolyn, that it would happen. And I need to adopt that, and I needed to get on board. And that's part of the resurrected life. Amen. <clears throat> got to tell you another story. As I was walking, I was trying to get back in here to preach to you all, and the guy stopped me, and he says, he goes, hey, I, you know, I got a denomination that I grew up in. He goes, I've never heard the word of God like that. He stopped me, and he was in tears. He's a visitor. And I don't know where he's from. Do you, you, you may know a family member that has never really heard the word of God, but they're caught up in a denomination. Just tell them to come in church here at Have Bible, take their denomination for just a second, just for a service, and stick it in their pocket and let the word of God speak to them. That's, that's, this guy was in tears that the word of God was being presented to him. It is so wonderful to hear the word of God. And thank God for the, for, for the message and the feet that carry the word out. Amen? Glory to the Lamb of God. So, uh, okay, so, so come and see the place where he lay. He is risen. So we find out that he is risen just as he said he would. And then if I was to turn over to 2 Corinthians 5.17, I'm going to paraphrase that when, when, when P, 2 Corinthians 5.17, the apostle Paul tells me that when you ask Jesus to come into your life, you're a new creature in Christ, the old is gone and the new has come, okay? Now, I paraphrase that because I want you to understand that that's what God said. God said that I was a new creature in Christ. So I'm a new creature in Christ, and I'm entitled, being, being an heir to this last will and testament, I'm entitled to all the promises that are in the Bible. Now, hold on for a second. You should applaud because it's good preaching, but listen to me. I even, sometimes even as a preacher, you have to put some stuff in your pocket and go, okay, I'm really going to, John, I'm just going to, I'm just going to believe that this really is the word of God. Because everybody has to deal with the first four words in the Bible, Steigers, for you guys out in O'Fallon, listen, and, and those of you in Texas and Florida and everywhere, in the beginning, God. Corky, you can, you can deal with it. You can say, okay, I believe this. Or you can take your Bible, if you don't believe it, take your Bible and throw it as far as you can because it doesn't mean anything to you. And people are going, oh my, don't do that. No, I don't do that. I'm just saying it's worthless to you if you don't believe in the beginning. God. So if I do believe it, then I have to believe in all the promises and I have to believe in the Old Testament. I have to believe in the New Testament. And I have to believe that Jesus really did rise from the grave. And when I see the Lord's table said, I know I can approach the Lord's table because I'm a born-again believer. It doesn't matter what your denomination... Oh, you don't want to hear this. I, I might pop your cork because only certain people can come to the Lord's table. And you are correct. It's only born-again believers. It's not priests or popes or nuns or anything like that. It is anybody that's a born-again believer. Yeah, I just said that. Because I want you to be able to come and receive. This is, the, this is a reminder of the new covenant that I have with him. Amen. I just, I just want to get to the table and be reminded of the covenant that God has with me. That's what this is all about. It was the Passover supper, but it was the last supper. That's the resurrected life. Amen. So as we look at this, let's go down to... Uh, I'm going to take you to 2 Corinthians 4.18. You guys are doing a lot, well, I'm not going to say that here. You guys are doing a lot better than the other services, but I, I don't, I'm, being as I'm on live stream, I've got to be careful what I say. So here it is, 2 Corinthians 4, 2 Corinthians 4, 17 and 18. For this light, momentary affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. Affliction, so this is momentary. So all the things that you're going through right now, all the hard times and all the children and the grandchildren,